Hello everyone and welcome to Angel Healing House and welcome to walk in Angel Ariel's weekly wisdom for this upcoming week of September 15th through September 24th, 2024. My name is Claire Candy Hoff and my name is also Angel Ariel as I had an angelic walk-in experience on January 11th of 2003, which I write about in my award-winning number one Amazon international bestseller, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, the autobiography of Angel Ariel. I'd like to thank everyone who has liked and shared, recommended and subscribed to my Claire Candy Hoff YouTube channel. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe, and when you become a subscriber, you will be notified when I upload new videos. To find out more about my wonderful services through my business, which is now 21 years a young, uh, Angel Healing House, please go to my website, which is angelhealinghouse.com, and that number is 831-277. 3716, and that's Eastern Standard Time. Now here on Walk in Angel Ariel's Weekly Wisdom, sometimes we pull tarot cards, sometimes we pull runes, Lenormand cards, oracle cards, but we always start by looking into the astrological heavens to see what planetary and celestial energies will be affecting and are affecting us. So first off, my angelic family, who I'm part of, we're called the Posse of Angels. The Posse of Angels and I want to wish everyone a belated happy Friday the 13th, which is contrary to accepted beliefs, one of the luckiest days of the year, as it's associated with the 13 cycles of the moon and women's 13 period cycles a year. Now, because it holds such a powerful, divine, feminine goddess energy, the number 13. In 1487, the patriarchal force was fearful of powerful, intuitive women and sought to suppress this empowered, free-thinking uh, energy and to demonize it, leading to many women healers, midwives, and intuitives being falsely accused of being witches and burned at the stake. Now, in Old English, Friday means the day of Frigg, which is the Norse, Norse god of fertility and love, a day which should be reclaimed and, as far as I can, am concerned, celebrate. So I always look upon 13 as a very, very lucky and powerful number. We are still under the powerful 9-9 portal gateway that will be open until the eclipse coming up on the 17th, 18th. Now remember that 9 is the number of completion and endings, with so much of our former lives having receded, becoming but a dim memory for many. And for many of us to move forward into our new reality, we must surrender to this process. By surrendering and releasing and letting go of our former lives, it creates space for the new high-frequency golden light to flow and help create our new realities. And with these upcoming eclipses, the universe is supporting the presentation of our new mission as part of Earth's ascension into the golden age of light, which was always destined to occur. Now, open to this powerful completion energies that ends our former lives and raises our vibrations to align and resonate with our place in this new earth. The Posse of Angels is reminding us that the closer we get to experience this new era of light on planet earth, that more and more atrocities will be revealed that were perpetuated on our planet through dark, greed, con corruption, and lack of humanity. And they are reminding all of us not to get enmeshed into the drama and the chaos, not to get enmeshed in the separation and division, but instead focus on the much larger picture of being reborn 
into a new planet of light and to get excited about celebrating our new lives. Now, coming up, as I mentioned, on September 17th, 18th, we will experience the full moon in Pisces. It's a lunar eclipse, which is likely to bring an ending to a chapter in our lives. You know, when we have eclipse season, we often start off with a lunar eclipse, and then it's going to be followed by a solar eclipse, and that solar eclipse is going to be on October the 2nd. But back to this lunar one, whether uh, an eclipse will remove and eclipse things out of our lives, or they will eclipse things into our lives. They will always put us where we are meant to be. Eclipses are known to trigger fated and destined events that bring powerful changes. Some of those things may be experienced as business or romantic proposals, weddings, divorces, pregnancies, deaths, new health routines, graduation, major moves in jobs, careers, business opportunities, and moving locations. The more that we can be accepting as to how this happens, the more we'll be able to flow with the often unpredictable, unexpected ways in which change is presented to us. With this eclipse falling in the watery, sensitive sign of Pisces, our intuition is really going to be our best guide. Now, remember that this eclipse is a North Node eclipse, which is all about our destiny, our fate, and our karma. Again, to put us where we need to be for the next chapter of our lives. Again, by flowing with what is presented to us, rather than angrily kicking and screaming and railing against it, then we can begin to move through these higher frequencies with ease and grace and allow our new lives to gradually be revealed to us. And the posse of angels, they're sharing that if you are one of those kickers <laughs> and if you are one of those screamers when it comes to change, remember that you are a multi-dimensional being who is so sovereign and is so powerful that you created, you co-created your current circumstances with spirit to occur for your soul's highest good and the greatest good of all concerned. And the Posse of Angels is speaking to those people who have had a particularly emotionally wretched few days following that Virgo new moon that was on um, September 2nd. Please know that even with the unpredictable and unexpected events accompanying eclipse season, there is more harmony. There is hope because there's more harmony, there's more balance, beauty, truth, and justice coming up on the horizon. For on September 22nd, we have not one, but we have two powerful balancing forces. The sun will enter the balanced sign of Libra, and the equinox, the autumn equinox here in the north, of course, it's the spring in the southern hemisphere, it's bringing equal hours of day and night. As it is the halfway point of the astrological year, the equinox is a time when we look at our lives and we take stock to see where we are choosing to give our energy and to see if we need to make any adjustments to balance out our lives. Perhaps we may need a more time, perhaps we just need to make more time to just be, connect with nature and stillness and make time for inner reflection. Maybe we need to be more attentive to our health and what we ingest in our bodies. You know, when you speak about ingesting things in your bodies, it's not just what we eat. It's what we watch. It's uh, what, we, uh, what we listen to, um, what we, uh, you know, who we follow, all of these things. Um, and if it's about chaos and drama and separation and division, it affects our energies and it lowers our vibrational frequencies. So 
in this time, take a good look at what you are ingesting. Okay, so um, with Libra being ruled by the planet Venus, which governs beauty and money, it's a wonderful time to see where we can bring more beauty into our lives, to focus on our finances, and to make sure that we make time with friends for laughter and playtime and fun. The balance in Libra season is bringing in a season of new developments, new opportunities, and new beginnings. It's a season of socializing, making new connections, and initiating projects. Now, here they come. The Posse of Angels is reminding all of us that we, do, we not only signed up for all of this, but we were overjoyed and we were thrilled at the prospect of elevating the earth out of enslavement and into the golden age. They're also reminding us that, yes, it is exhausting, sometimes painful, and makes us highly emotional. But that's a good thing, because ascension completely rewires and purifies us at a cellular level. We simply cannot ascend, and we simply cannot become enlightened if we remain in the same life and the same energies that created our former lives. When we fully embody the higher dimensional frequencies, our clarity will return as energy will flow easily and gracefully within us. Another indication of being in the higher frequencies is that we will find solutions to problems and challenges that often plagued us, or they will disappear altogether. Fear is no longer part of us as we are free, liberated, sovereign, and independent of anything and anyone who would hold us back from our dreams and our desires. Now, as we are entering into these final months of the year, the Posse of Angels wish for us to know 2024 was always going to be the year of the underdog those who have had a particularly hard road to tow, as the odds seem to be wholly stacked against them. This is especially true for Librans, as I'm a Libran, as they are finishing up a very difficult 15-year cycle that taught us invaluable lessons, but stopped many of us from achieving our dreams. As the rest of this year unfolds, 2024 will continue to be a year of truth. And all I can say is, hallelujah, <laughs> we will see revelations and we will see disclosures of the corruption and dishonesty of people in self-appointed positions of power. And this will lead to the dismantling of these appointments, causing the removal of these dark controlling manipulators. If you have felt like you have been held back. As these positions become available, it is more than likely that you were meant to step into one of these roles. These are roles that will change the world. And many in the collective are on the verge of stepping into their highest timeline and the position that your soul was born to do very exciting times. So I asked the Posse of Angels for their wisdom and their advice, and I asked them how. How do we prepare? How do we ready ourselves for these enormous changes ahead? And when I asked for additional messages, the Posse of Angels directed me once again to the Wisdom of the Oracle Cards by Colette Bar Bar Baron reed Love these cards. And for those who are downhearted, for those who are in despair, the first card that has come out and made an appearance is milk and honey. Look at this beautiful card. Um, and this is heralding what is on the horizon for many. Um, the milk and honey card is a number 51, and that is a number six. And the six comes after the trials and the challenges 
of the number five. And it tells us, it tells us of a time when we will taste, we will taste the prosperity, the abundance, the opportunities born of authenticity, born of us now stepping in to our authentic selves and releasing and surrendering any of our, uh, of our former lives that were created with lower dimensional frequencies. Now, the Posse of Angels is sharing that many will be entering a very sweet time when all their needs will be met. I mean, look at that rainbow. It's absolutely beautiful. You know, the, the beauty of the rainbow um, that it uh, promises. It promises, uh, you know, clear times ahead, um, and that wishes are coming true. By being our abundant self, which is what we have been doing either consciously or unconsciously for the past decades, will become a divine emissary for spirit. And this energy within ourselves of authenticity and connecting to our divinity allows for the doorness to, a sw to sweetness, to open the illumination of our soul's purpose on earth. That's the way it opens up. It doesn't open up by you doing anything or, or, or being more productive or anything like that. It opens because of the changes that you've made within to be your most divine, authentic self. Every choice that we make from now on has the potential to seize good fortune and opportunities, which then leads us to our best life ever, a life in which we embrace our divinity. What an incredible message to start this reading. Starting with this new card, it already has a new feel as we are a few days from the eclipse. We're already affected by the eclipse, that eclipse energy. It affects us for a month before and a month after. Um, but many people are picking up this beautiful, beautiful milk and, any, milk and honey energy um, as we go into this first eclipse. The next one coming out for us is a 34, which is a number seven. And it's a leg up. This card is acknowledging that the next part of the journey for many will be receiving the help and the aid that they need to achieve the fulfillment of their dreams. The trick here is to accept the aid which is given freely. You know, when we allow ourselves to go from giving all the time to opening to receive again, going into that equal time, that period of balance, giving and receiving, we make room for miracles to happen. Because if you're giving all the time, how on earth is the universe going to give to you if you do not open up to receive in the way that the universe wishes for you to receive? And the th third card is another number seven, and this one is to the sea. You know, this is all about the flow of the universe, returning to source, no longer feeling an agenda, then God sources agenda, which by the way is always right on time and comes in the most heavenly, miraculous of ways. You know, when we live solely in the present moment, Events and conditions are fluid. They seem to happen effortlessly. And the Posse of Angels is saying that that is exactly what we need to do now. We need to go with the flow. Allow trust and faith to guide you forward. Allow yourself to be guided like a river to the wider potential of the open sea. And they're saying, don't worry because you will be guided to where your soul needs to be for the next part of your journey. So what divine messages uh, uh, 
um, can the uh, posse of angels give us in order to put to rest our doubts and fears? Okay, so this, this is beautiful that it's, we're going into a time of milk and honey where we will be assisted, whether you want to call that um, being given a leg up by our soul tribe, that those who are most like us in energetic um, resonance that we will connect with and collaborate to fulfill our dreams, and then for the fluidity, the effortless, effortless grace and flow of our lives to come in. No more struggling, no more challenging uh, challenging uh, things, but staying in that place that what is meant for you will always be for you. Only if you open to receive. So next, the posse of angels, when I asked them, should I go to tarot cards? They said, nope. Keep going with the oracle cards. So I said, okay, we'll keep going with the oracle cards. And the next cards they uh, directed me to were the Earth Angels message card. These are beautiful by Amanda Clark. I've been so blessed to have so many of these beautiful cards. A three-card story came out with the white hair showing up. And this is the card of Ostara. Opening message is about enlightening our trust and our belief that things will be more beautiful from this day forward. Rejoice and celebrate. Jump for joy like this leaping white hair and feel yourself liberated. Feel yourself free to now step forward into the new, leaving your fears and worries behind. You will be supported. Ostara is the spring fertility festival that honors Estra, goddess of the dawn, and many will find themselves on the brink of a dawn of a new way of living here on a very new planet of light. A beautiful Ostara. It comes with an affirmation, which is, I am guided and receive more beauty in my life. And what did we speak about? We, sp we spoke about Venus. We spoke about it becoming Libra season on the 22nd. And, and Venus is all about bringing more beauty into our lives. So there's Ostara there. Her card is followed by this card, Serenity. And what did we speak about? We spoke spoke about making more time to connect with nature, to connect in stillness, and, um, and to just relax. Allow your life to show you what is destined for you. You don't have to push life. You don't have to push your own angels, your spirit guides, and God source energy. They know. They know you better than you know yourself. And most of the time, we get in our own way. For now, retreat is the best medicine at this stage to gather all our strength and all our power, power for what will be offered to us soon to leap forward into. Now, if you're having trouble letting go of control and expectation, perhaps you need to recite the serenity prayer. And it goes like this. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. Encourage and have the courage to change the things that I can and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one blessed moment at a time, surrendering to God's will, not our will. Remember what is meant for you will always be for you and will not pass you by. The only way it can pass you by is if you don't receive it because you still have free will. So our best um, course of action is to gather and regain our strength before we step into those new roles is to retreat. We, can, we don't have to go to a pay for a retreat. We can retreat at home to go out in nature and make time for stillness, reflection, and meditation in our lives. Third card in this story, we have the another leaping, leaping rabbit with 
flexibility. And the message is, um, is following the current of life, like our card, which we had, to the sea. Our flexibility to be able to flow now uh, is so important. It will release us and lead us to our true identity and our true life. By being flexible, more and more possibilities can be presented to us and more miracles can be presented to us and goodness will have the change. Uh, goodness will have the change to blossom all around us. And that is by us being flexible. And there we have the full moon in Pisces coming up. How synchronistic is that? And we had two lovely white hairs show us white is the number of new beginnings and that white hair is about fertility, it's about flexibility, uh, it's about luck. Luck and prosperity. Very, very propitious, the white rabbit showing up for us. And <laughs> he still wanted me to choose two more cards, so I went to the Tree Keeper's Oracle and two more, just to solidify and just to confirm what we've been talking about is the Keeper of Ease came out. Now look at this woman. She's just lying there in nature. You know, she's lying against some rocks and there's a waterfall there and just she's flowing. She's flowing just like our to the sea, flowing. The flexibility that we have, flowing. The serenity to relax into our new way of being and this austera, this new beginning that's happening for us. So the ease to just relax into that and the trust and the faith and the knowing that you will be shown, you won't miss out. And of course, that's followed with the butterflies that are about transformation. And it's the card of Keeper of Beginnings, which is the card of austera, which is the card of... The, um, the milk and honey card with that rainbow, they're all working together to tell us to relax, to surrender, to have that inner uh, serenity and that flexibility that we will be shown. And because many of us, many, many, many of us have gone through a rebirth. So to finish off today, I'm going to go to with all of this rebirth and being reborn energies, I'm going to go to my baby tarot and choose three cards to finish off this reading today. Let's see what comes out. And okay, and one more shuffle. And the first card that's coming out for us is, how cute is this, is the Wheel of Fortune. This is the card of destiny. It's the card of karma. It's the wheel finally turning in our favor. It's our turn to take that turn around the wheel and to, uh, and to step into that good fortune that, that it's bringing us. Um, in many, many in the collective will be um, with these eclipses coming up, which is very unpredictable and unexpected energies, it will be bringing us in the fulfillment of our wishes in very unexpected ways. But step forward. Take a leap forward, just like our rabbits. Take a leap forward when we are presented with the fulfillment of our dream. Even if it doesn't come in the way that you have expected it to come in, Spirit has a plan for you. Your soul has a plan for you. And it may look very different from what you expected. And it will lead to great rewards. It will, uh, it will lead to the collaborations and connections that you need and a great time of celebration to step into those roles and being a part 
of this new era of light on planet Earth. The next card is the Hierophant. <laughs> it's so cute. It's a number five card. It's the card of change. The Hierophant is the spiritual teacher. And as the Posse of Angels and I mentioned before, that with so many of those corrupt and dishonest manipulators uh, now being revealed and disclosed and um, no longer allowed to hold their self-appointed positions of power, there are many in the collective that will put our, our hands up to step into those roles as those leaders, as those spiritual teachers, to be able to create a more harmonious and, um, and wonderful world of humanity and um, acceptance uh, rather than a separateness and division. And the next card that's coming out for us, and what a beautiful card to end with. Look at all of these babies. It's the Ten of Cups. Emotional fulfillment. Um, I often call this the Sunshine Lollipops and Roses card. You know, a card in which uh, you know, what is presented to us ticks all of those boxes and it will make us feel like the journey was worth it. So beautiful cards to end there. Let's choose three cards from our Divine Doors. If you're looking for this, it's Divine Doors. And see what doors we, we may be walking through in the coming months, in the coming weeks, perhaps in the next few days, as these eclipses bring us such wonderful moments and, um, and experiences to be able to change our lives. Not just to change our lives for change's sake, but putting us where we are meant to be for the next part of our journey. Come on, jump, 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 posse of angels. Help me to make these jump three times. Okay, I'll do it one more time. And if nothing jumps out, I'm going to cut this deck and then just choose three cards for us. Okay. Choose three cards. One, two, three. Beautiful door is presented here. It's the card of inner power. By your own command, you brought yourself here. Remember I said that we are all powerful. We are multidimensional beings, sovereign and powerful, and we created our current circumstance. That's how powerful we are. So we can change that. We can change that with our thoughts and our words and our, our feelings inside of us. At this moment in life, you have nothing to fear. And we spoke about the serenity prayer. We spoke about our being flexible and opening up to the way that God, Source, Creator, our angels, and our spirit guides wish to give to us. And this comes from in here. It doesn't come from anything out there, from our inner power. Next card that is coming out for us. Oh, isn't that, isn't that lovely? It's palmistry. Fortune and tarot, collective destiny. The palm lines from birth tell your sacred palmistry. Okay. I don't know if some of you out there practice palmistry, but um, what we did, uh, met, what the Posse of Angels did mention before is to get ready and prepare yourself for this time ahead is some of those divination tools, and they all rely on just one source, which is your intuition. Whatever you're presented with, make sure. You go into your heart, make sure you connect with your higher self, whatever you want to call that, and make sure that your intuition is on board with it. Um, sometimes you'll get a no, sometimes you'll get a no, which may mean not now, and not now does not mean forever, but, um, and that means to wait, to wait for more information or a better time. And then this door comes up. And this is the door to destiny. What have we been speaking about? That Because it's a North Node eclipse, that it is a time to step into our karma, our destiny, our, the things that are fated for us. One door closes. That's our former lives. Another opens for us. Let the plans of destiny 
unravel true for us now. So I hope all that has been helpful for you. Remember that Angel Ariel's Weekly Wisdom airs every week um, on the weekends, and most often I try to post on Saturdays. If you would like help in releasing your former life, uh, releasing humiliation, guilt, betrayal, abandonment, anger, resentment, regret, disappointment, fears, doubts, anything, shame, pride, anything that will keep you anchored into the lower dimensional frequencies, please go to my website and look up my Emotion Code healing sessions, which have been absolutely miraculous and transformative for many. Um, There's intuitive counseling, there's those angel tarot card readings, and of course, the remarkable energy healing sessions of Reiki, which can be... um, administered um, anywhere in the world through distant healing. Please go to my website, which is angelhealinghouse.com, and that uh, website and the phone number are in the description box down below. Uh, Also, with how to order my my number one Amazon international best-selling books and... um, And all of the information that you need is down below. Go out, everyone, and fashion an absolutely beautiful life for yourself. I'm wishing you love and, as always, angel blessings. And I wish you a beautiful eclipse season coming up. And open up and start to get very excited about stepping in and leaping forward into our new lives. Take care, everyone. Bye.